Hey, this is Mike from the Graphic Novel Show. Are you interested in starting and running your own podcast? Well, you know, this is the second one that we've done. We used to do a different one, and we decided to start this one. And last time we used Anchor, and you know what? We decided to go back with Anchor again because they are the easiest way to make a podcast. They give you everything you need in one place for free. You can do it right from your phone or on your computer. Anchor gives you creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. You can do that right from your phone. That's quite amazing. They'll also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your, po- uh, from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Now, what you need to do is go download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, I'm Parker, and I use they, them pronouns. Hi, I'm Mike, and I use he, him pronouns. And welcome to the Graphic Novel Podcast. Welcome to the Graphic Novel Podcast, the weekly show where we review and discuss graphic novels, zines, and many comics, and we throw in a bit of real life. Sometimes we talk about queer issues, race issues, sometimes we talk about death, and we are very often talking about relationships. Every week we have a brand new episode on Friday. You can check it out, and the best way to uh, like our show is to go on Apple Podcasts and give us five stars. If you got time, give us a review on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, or any one of those places that you listen to your podcast. Make sure that you subscribe so each week when uh, this podcast goes live, it shows up in your feed and we'll be there waiting for you to listen. You can inter- oh, sorry. You can interact with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Insta. If you want to help us grow, which of course, why would you not? Share like us that. with your friends. It's the best way to help our podcast grow. And if you want to uh, visit us on anchor.fm slash graphic novel podcast. You can um, leave us a voice message and maybe we will play it. All right, Parker, how is it going? Pretty good. It's pretty going good. pretty good. Yes. Um, multiple things. Uh, as of today, uh, well, as of this week, Joe Biden has enough electors to be the next president, even though there is a giant conglomerate of people Far suing to, to try, to well, suing just to try to. To, to change the election. I don't get it. I don't understand. He is the perfect puppet to, to do destroy our democracy. And I don't understand. And the problem is he's got the kind of money that he could just leave and go anywhere, too. He well, he doesn't, but people behind him do. <laughs> he has money. He's not as rich as he claims. Uh, how do we know that? We've never don't. We never will. Because he'll never. Remember re- after he got elected, he was going to. Yep. Four years later. Yep. I know it. All right. Um, so this is. How are you doing? I never ask you. I oh, like. I'm I'm good. I'm good. This is our last regular interview or review show of the year. Next week is going to be our our second annual uh, best of show because the year is almost over. You guys, yeah, we are almost out of 2020. Oh, and okay. I am so fucking thrilled. <laughs> Hopefully, 2021 turns out to be better. But I mean, it's looking good. You know, looking good. Looking yes, good. but we've got a long year ahead of us. So. <sighs> Hopefully, that's all we can help hope for. I mean, this has been this year. <laughs> I don't know. There are some bright spots in it. We talked about there that. have been yes, um, but uh, what we and unfortunately we didn't all make it to twenty twenty one. No, no that we've There's... lost a lot of people. Uh, are we up to two hundred eighty thousand? I believe. Yeah. I mean, it's just a horrible number. All right, so let's uh, let's see. I've got a review. We got a little bit of news, and uh, then we've got uh, our main review of the week. So, uh, first off, um, we were doing a little shopping at Lowe's yesterday, and I'd like to say a big fuck you to the two women who were walking by our car while I was in the store, and uh, Parker and our children were in there, and they were laughing at our Black Lives Matter and, and trans stickers. And uh, I'd like to say fuck you to you and anybody like you. Yeah, I so I I 
was I was in the car with the kids. That's what we do. So we don't all go into the stores ever. I have not stepped foot in a store since March. But um, so we're sitting in the car and I hear these this giggling behind us and I kind of turn around to look and then I hear <laughs> Black Lives Matter. <laughs> And uh, our oldest heard them say something about the trans rights or human rights sticker as well. But I didn't hear that part. And then it like stopped abruptly. So I think they realized that we were in the car. I don't think they had realized it at first. Um, And then I saw them turn around and after they were well past the car and I made eye contact and kind of gave them a little glare. Well, then we were putting our item in the trunk, you know, struggling with that. We had, (laughs) had our door open. And it turned out that they were in the car next to so us. So Mike being, I, I told, I told Mike about what had happened. I, I said these, these two women, I didn't say what car they were in. Yeah. I didn't see what car they came out right. of either. Uh, I said, oh, these fucking women were being such assholes about the blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So then the, these women come out and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to point them out or anything mm-hmm. to Mike right in front of like, oh, see these assholes right here. Uh, <laughs> so then Mike's like, oh, sorry. Cause our car door was open and they were getting in the car right next to us. And I go, don't be sorry. And that, was guess, them. that was them. <laughs> <laughs> so then I look at the back of their car and I start see that they have a little Jesus emblem on there. And I, and I started laughing very loudly <laughs> about it and saying things about it. So, I mean, that, that's about as good as we can get. All right. The other news. So that passive aggressive. Oh, job there. It's, I'm very good at that. The, uh, the other news. <laughs> I don't um, know if that's something. <laughs> a uh, few, few months back. I think it may have been back, back in September, uh, late September. We had announced that uh, the L.A. Comic Con was still going to go on. Uh, they had been talking with the county and health officials and everything, and they were going to figure out some way to do this. They had actually started uh, pre-selling tickets. Uh, I think it was supposed to go on in this month, December. And um, they said, we're going to do it. And I'm like, how the fuck are you going to do this? Yeah. Everybody else has canceled their cons. Everything's everything's virtual. And they're like, well, we're going to do it. Well, I hadn't heard anything about it. And, and Parker actually said something the other day. So I looked it up. And it, like two or three weeks later after we had announced that, uh, they actually canceled it. <laughs> because they, re- uh, they realized that they didn't have enough uh, knowledge. They didn't know what the state was going to allow them to do. They didn't know if there was going to be any more closures, nothing. By the time this happened, and it turns out there is because right. things got worse. Uh, in fact, there's mandatory clo- uh, closures in some cities in California. Oh, yeah. Some counties, I believe. Huh. So, anyhow. So, LA County, probably. Uh, I, I don't remember where, but yeah, a few places. Uh, it might be north, too. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's uh, that's that. Um, yeah. Uh, not a lot of good stuff going on in... Um, um, you know, with, because of that. So, uh, all right. So the next thing I guess we can talk about is I'll do this review. So this book called Doctor Who, Time Lord, Victorious, Defender of the Daleks. This is a, uh, let's see, where is it? Who's it by? It's from Titan Comics, is it? Yep, Titan Comics. And... Uh, there's three, I think there were three stories that they put together. Um, and who was it by? I don't even see the creators. So. That's kind it's, of important. It's multiple people. Maybe maybe it's at the beginning of each story. Uh, oh, here it is. Time Lord Victorious. Story by James Goss. Writer Jody Hauser. Artist Roberta Ingran- Ingranata. Colorist Enrica Aaron Angiolini. Flatters, Sherry Shankhama, and Sabrina Delgros. Letterer, Richard, uh, Richard Starkins of Comic Craft. All of these people have uh, pronounced um, big name, big, bold colorist, is as big as the writer, and even Flatters, which you don't ever even hear about Flatters. Those are the ones that yeah. do the initial colors. We had talked about uh-huh, that one right. once before. Right. Um, and a letterer too. I mean, usually you get the letterer in there, but a lot. but uh, yeah, that's good. That's nice. Anyhow, this is a very cool story about the Daleks uh, using the tenth Doctor and the thirteenth Doctor. And uh, what happens is the thirteenth Doctor, I'm sorry, the tenth Doctor is uh, he looks like he wakes up to find out that uh, in the TARDIS and he co- goes out he tries to travel and he, found, he finds out that the Daleks 
are out there. And they keep, every time he moves, he like time travels and they're there, right there. So finally he's like, all right, I got to find out. You know, he jumps all over time and they're there every time. And he's like, what is going on? So finally he finds out that they need him to help defeat an enemy worse than Doctor Who. And uh, it's a pretty good story. I, I enjoyed reading the whole thing. It was uh, it was really good. Art is good. Story's good. Um, I haven't watched Doctor Who in years, but I'm sure the characters are, are similar to uh, to the ones in the show. Uh, and it's good. It, it was really it was a good story. I liked it because when I used to watch the show, uh, the Daleks were always the big big um, you know arch nemesis. So it was a, a fun thing to read. But uh, yeah, that's uh, Doctor Who, Time Lord Victorious from Titan Comics. You want to take a look for that one. It's a good one. All right. And that is uh, the mini review there that I did. All right. We're ready to do our main review this week. Yes. All right. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were asking the audience or me. Are you ready, audience? <laughs> Are you ready? I don't hear you. All right. You don't hear their cheers? I, Unless cheers or tears? <laughs> if they're listening to this, they are probably crying. Oh, stop. Anyhow. Uh, so this book is called One Story. It's from Fantagraphics Books. And it's a brand, brand, new, brand new book this year uh, from Fantagraphics. And it's from the artist and writer GP. And it is called One Story. One story is actually made of two intricately entangled tales. Silvano Londe is a successful writer who, at the age of 50, sees his family leaving him and his life harshly falling apart. Londe's great-grandfather, Mauro, is an anxious soldier being fed to the maw of carnage in the First World War. Alternating between past and present, a psych ward and bloody trenches, and told through revealing repetition and complex clues of the gas station and aspect baroness, Found love letters. One story documents the origins of pain that serve as the roots of a twisted family tree and allows the reader to trace the branches. <clears throat> With one story, the worldwide award winning cartoonist and filmmaker Jippy? Jippy? How is it? I don't know. Uh, Jippy? Jippy? Yeah. I'm sorry for mispronunciation. Has created his most ambitious and lyrical work yet. Shifting from scratchy black and white to lush watercolors, the Italian master intertwines styles and narratives to document the passion and cruelty passed down from one generation to the next, and details the fragile tightrope mankind yet mankind yesterday, just as today, has to traverse to retain hope. All right, so GP is uh, his real name is Gianni Pachinapi. Uh, Wait a second. What was Pasinati. that? What? His name is G-P. Yes. G-I-P-I. Correct. His real name is G-I-P-A. It's G-I. Is it Gianni Pachinati. So he goes by But G- does he actually want people to know that? Or is that... It's it's all over. It's in fan, it's on Fanographics. It's on okay. Wikipedia. It's okay. But he goes by that probably because it's, it's easier uh, to say. Especially since his work is worldwide. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Uh, he's an Italian cartoonist whose notes for uh, a war story won best book at the uh, Angelum uh, International Comics Festival. He also teaches and has directed a film, 2011's The Last Man on Earth. So, this is uh, this was a, a complex book, and uh, you know it, it probably really takes several several readings to 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 get through it all. Yes, I, I was looking uh Looking at some some um, interviews with him, and he just he he really and, and some reviews of this book, some other reviews of it, and um, the book is really deep. It's it's something that is uh, very complex. Something that sometimes yeah, I, we, I, don't, uh, <laughs> we don't we don't read things like that. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think it's our uh, necessarily our typical our typical book um or graphic novel mm-hmm. but i mean do you want to just talk about the artwork first yes the artwork is, is fantastic it is i um, do love the way that he chose to show the difference in stories mm-hmm. you know you knew that you were on you were looking at yes. the other at the other generation when you were um reading the or seeing the watercolor right gorgeous watercolor work and that is that is his his 
grandfather's story, uh, great grandfather, great grandfather's story from World War One. That's in color, watercolors, you know, and it's it's war, so you could guess what the colors are. It's not like bright, you know, bright flashy colors. They're they're dreary and mm-hmm. war torn colors and. Right. And 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 his artwork is amazing. The people that look fantastic, but then when it's like the modern day and it's Lando, right? What's his name? Landy. 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 The, Landy. The Landy. The uh, the the creator who is uh, at the very beginning. You find out that he is in a, 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 an institution, and um, his story is in black and white, and it's just sketched. Yeah. It's very sketchy. It's beautiful. Sketchy. Very sketchy. Yeah. You know, like it's, somebody was just taking a pen and just, you know, scribbling these these stories. But that out. doesn't do it justice. No, say. it doesn't. <laughs> like it does. Like it, it, it is intricate. And, yes, and detailed it's detailed. And, like there's this tree that there's so much detail in it. Yes, and and some parts I think if, isn't this the there there are words written on the tree. Yes, in the in the. Uh, in the drawing. Yes. Can find it. Yeah. I think that's later in the story. Oh, okay. But, but so you jump back and forth between these two stories and basically what you've got is got, you've got Landy who has suffered some type of, of mental breakdown. Um, you have doctors discussing, yes. discussing his case. Yes. And, 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 and he's, and he is, um, he's in this institution and he's trying, uh, trying to figure everything out. And I think he wants to get out at this, you know, at some point in the book, he's like, I'm ready to leave. And they're like, really? You think you're ready to leave? Huh? How yeah. Come, I how wasn't come? sure at first if he was, if he was like, yes, if he was, uh, huh. so, so yeah, I'm, the story jumps around a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm just skimming through it here and it starts to blend in certain parts where the color, and the and the um, sketching come together. Oh yeah, and uh, not too far in, but it's interesting how the the how Landy is kind of like always this you know sketchy character. Not in, I mean, just the way he's presented. And the the big thing is right. That's how you tell the difference. Between, yeah, between the generations. Right, and he's he's kind of the big thing that uh, the theme going throughout the book is that he's constantly talking about looking in the mirror. At an, as an 18 year old looking in the mirror and saying, you know, what if your face, you woke up one day and you look like you were a 50 year old man, but you were still 18. You know, how would you, how would you look at that? You know? And that's something that he talks about throughout the whole book. Uh-huh. And you've got, and you've how got, would, how would you feel if you woke up and, and at 18 and looked in the mirror and you look, I don't know. At, at I mean, you still look 50. I don't look too bad. So I don't know if I'd be horrified, but, but at 18, I think yeah. it would have been, yeah, it would have been. If you woke up and looked at like, like what the hell happened? Yeah, but, I think um, I would have been too. I would be too. But um, I mean, and, and the other the other thing is is the grand great grandfather's story is I mean he's in the middle of battle. He's he's in he's in a trench, and they're hiding from Germans. I believe they were. They're hiding from them, and the one man that he's with, one other soldier, is injured. He's got a bullet in him, and he's trying to keep him quiet because they don't know they're there. Well, isn't that isn't his great grandfather the one? That, well, I, maybe I was confused. No, he was the one. He who, wasn't who? the one that was shot. He was the other one. Okay, I think I was confused. At least that's what I thought. I thought he that's was the, the one w- who was shot. I don't believe so. Um, you trying to find it? Yeah, but I'm not going to. No, it's. But I mean, and it goes back and forth, back and forth between like, like, like you say, the doctors discussing like here, uh, Landy Silvano, age 45, one step from the edge. Landy? How long's he been here? Almost three months. Landy? Did you say Landy? Silvano? Landy? Yes, Dr. Brizzy. I said Landy. Uh, no previous problems. No genetic predispositions or episodes of family history and family history, no physical imbalances. And I have to say, this is also, uh, this is a translated book. Oh, yeah. It was translated too. It was originally released in uh, in Italy, I believe. And it's a few, so it's a few years old, the original story. Um, but that does nothing to diminish it. This is just, it's a great, it's a great story. It's just, it's so much to 
to to think about. You're trying to trying to see how these two different stories uh, come together. And like one of the reviews I had read said that, you know, it's how previous generations and future future generations, if you look at them, sometimes they're not that different. Well, you know? I mean, yeah. When you look at, are you you're talking strictly looks, or are you talking what, about? But, but what happens to people? I mean, the grandfather is in a situation that he had no control over, and he's going through all this pain and agony and everything. Mm -hmm. And Landy, in current time, is going through all this, but it sounds like his is self created. Well, I don't. I don't think he so. I, he, he Tom, lost his what his wife left him, uh -huh. and he's estranged from his daughter. So you've, he's got all these these things that are weighing on him, and he's a this a well known is he a writer or an artist writer yeah writer yeah yeah. Um, but I think that what what it's what it's talking about is that intergenerational trauma, that trauma mm. that changes your DNA. Okay, yeah. And when when you when your ancestors go through the things that they go through. It, it changes D your DNA. I mean, I, I, I definitely, my mom was adopted and uh, from a really shitty situation and I, and, and it, it, adoption is a trauma and, uh, and she remembers being three years old and trying to convince foster parents that, that she was worth keeping, you know, like the, the, the amount of trauma that people have gone through in life. Right. And then it, it, it goes, it, it just changes your DNA. And if mm -hmm. your DNA is changed, anything you create from that DNA is going to be yeah. altered with it. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it, it, and it, and it, it looks at those things when you think really hard. I mean, you, it really doesn't even take that hard. I'm sure you can think of, of instances in your life where you've seen trauma that's, that's come from past generations that you, that, have changed who you are as a person. No, oh, probably. I mean, honestly, I can't think of anything in this moment. But, but I, I mean, in, in the story, I mean, you've got the grandfather who, uh, throughout the whole thing, he well, what happens is Landy, it, it jumps around, but Landy finds all these old letters that his grandfather had sent home to what would become his grandmother. Right. And all he wanted to do was he just wanted to get home. He wanted to get out of the war. He wanted to get home. That's all he wanted. He just wanted to get home to her. He missed her. He loved her. He wanted to get home. And was and she was expecting, right? The, or, or no, she had just had a baby. Is that what it was? I think because okay. he said something about um, so were they married? the baby growing. So I think they, they were married. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember because I, oh, I really yeah, like yeah. the way that he did it because it's probably how letters mm -hmm. were found, that, you know, you start to write and then you have to leave. So then you maybe, oh, yeah. so it's, it's scribbled mm -hmm. out. Yeah, exactly. You're in a trench you writing. A he's, new one. Yeah. He shows up, shows him in a trench, you know, writing this letter and it's raining and everything. He's just trying to get something out because like, I don't know if this is going to be my last letter, you know, he has a ki uh, kiss little Giuliano for me. Mm, right. Yeah. So okay. yeah, uh, okay. I saw, I saw his picture, mm -hmm. how, how darling he is like, you. that's right. He hadn't met him yet. Right. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So you've you've got this man who just w desperately wants to to get out of this war and get home, and Landy finds these letters and he becomes obsessed with them, and reading them and just I think just thinking about his great grandfather and and all the trauma he went through just trying to get through war, and he obsessed over him and he was like reading them to his daughter who was younger at the time. And she's like, yeah, okay, great. You know, which a lot of younger, a lot of kids, they don't care about that kind of stuff. It's right. when they become adults, they look at it differently. Yeah, Sometimes sure. not everybody always, but sometimes right. as kids are like, Oh yeah, that's great. I, honestly, I remember when I released my first few books and, and uh, my stepdaughters, they, they used to see me write and stuff. And they used to see the books at the house and they're like, great. And then one day I get a call or a text from the one who saw it at Barnes and Noble. And I'm like, yeah, I write books. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. They saw it. And then, it, then suddenly it was, was wow, it Barnes you... and Noble or was it uh borders? It, it was the... one of them. Yeah. But it, it, but, it, but it was like, yeah, see, remember those? Yeah. I, <laughs> that's what I did. And, and a lot of times to kids, you know, it's, they're different. They're, they're growing. They've got their own things to worry about. So like letters from, you know, from a hundred years ago to them is, is like boring crap. Well, yeah, a lot of times, not everybody, but it's like, Oh, great. You know, uh, he was my great, great grandmother received these letters. Oh, that's great. You know, <laughs> to a kid. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, but Landy was obsessed with them. And, and I think 
it, one of the things I read said that, you know, could that have been, could that and led to the downfall to his relationship? Like he was so obsessed with this stuff that. I mean, I would venture to guess that it was, that it would just be a part of it, right? Contributing like, factor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, so it's it, I, just, I can't get over the artwork. I love it so much. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's it's different than some of the other things we've read, but it's it says so much. I mean, it does it all. You know? And I mean, the one page here is like it's page page 23. It's early on. It is there's so much going on and so many word balloons and everything. But you could still read it. I mean, it's just these doctors going back and forth talking about Landy who's in this mental institution and he wants to get out at some point he wants to get out and they're just discussing, you know, why is he here? You know, he had a breakdown. Did he have a breakdown? Because yeah, what's the breakdown because his family fell apart and his daughter won't talk to him or he gets to the point and he's like, you know, I was just tired. I'm, I'm ready to leave now. Can I go? I'm, I was just tired. And they're like, Oh, you were just tired. Is that all it was? You were just tired. You just needed a break from, you know, life. Mm hmm. Whereas the grandfather didn't have that luxury. He couldn't just take a break. He was in the middle of a friggin' war. Well, yes. I mean. <laughs> and I think that's the correlation. You there. were right, too, by the way. It wasn't his grandfather that got shot. It was the other guy. Okay, that's what I thought. So I, he, he I was the one trying to keep the other guy quiet, yes. quiet just to get so they could get through it. I just remember seeing the other guy's eyes when when he was when the great grandfather's covering his mouth and the guy's eyes are like bulging oh, in yeah. his head and the, and I I equated it back to when uh they're when he's drawing um uh Alondi's eyes oh. so I was just I was seeing it wrong okay oh and and here like what you were talking about uh, on page thirty two. Uh, it's like uh, multiple letters that were started. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple yeah. letters started and then just scribbled out, and finally it's like, okay, I, you know, I got to go. Then hopefully I can get home soon. I love you. Yeah, uh, you know. Um, but it's it's just this beautiful these dark skies and yeah, and there's so much emotion de in, desolate. In the, yes. in the artwork. Yeah, there's some things like that page. There's just a couple little things. It, it just he writes, "I love you. I'll be back." But then the rest of it is just this dark, desolate scenery like like looking out at that am i ever going to get back really you know mm -hmm. and uh you know and, and just some great stuff and and uh the the book is really and they and then you've got the politics too there's the politics of the people that you know they just want to have the war to fight because they can the people up higher the the wealthy the wealthy people uh -huh. the yeah. aristoc the aristocrats that won't ever actually fight or their children won't actually fight in it right but they want to see everybody else so it can play out and see how it you know how it turns out and you know it's all all these things how it affects other people i really love that part <laughs> about the um about the tear ducts and uh the artwork that goes along with it too where's that where the um page 62 Mm -hmm. uh, they're talking about the like the lines in your faces that are formed and mm -hmm. comparing it to um, to um, like landscaping and how uh, the rain is what makes the shape of 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 the ground right mm -hmm. and saying that it's the and the, it's the tear ducts uh, uh -huh. that have that have created created the lines on our faces and mm, yep. human faces yeah yeah there's a whole it's a several page thing the, about that right oh my about god the water the artwork, water flowing and all that black ink just mm -hmm. fucking brilliant yeah. yeah he talks about how it, it's going back millennia and, and how that all formed and the water and all this stuff just mm. like just like you know like a stream carving its way through the ground that gets bigger and carves you know becomes a, a a river and you know things like that and it's really mm -hmm. interesting the the, the way he, he puts these things together and um huh, i don't know and then he he says he's talking i think it's when he's talking to his daughter he says your face is entirely smooth you've never cried uh-huh she says yes i have you've you just, just never ne noticed yeah. no. so i mean all these things that i i mean I don't know if this is him thinking about this stuff, you know, or is this, they're just giving background in the story. You know, I'm not quite sure, but it's, it's just really good. Um, you know, and it's, there's just so much to it that 
it's not something we can do justice discussing it. You really have to read it. And you probably have to read it a couple of times to really appreciate everything in it. Um, I mean, the, the battles, the war, there's I know, I'm just pages looking, looking over it again. And I'm like, Oh man, I want to read this again. <laughs> pages, pages of, of war with very little, very little text. It's just, you have to see what's happening and, and read it in the photo. And that was one of the, one the of the tree things that keeps coming back. The one of the things that I did read in the one review that said that, um, oh. that is part of, part of the, the way he, he fills the story in like they, they said that his, his writing is not 100%, but, but yeah. put, putting these pictures in and reading the way he can, the way he can depict it in pictures, uh-huh. um, like fills it in and, and makes up for well, that. I mean, for isn't, that, part. isn't, no, that, isn't that what graphic novels are about though? I mean, you're not supposed to tell the whole story. Exactly. In words. Mm-hmm. The, the art is, is yes. A I, huge part of it. I, I yeah. agree. I, I'm not sure if I. No, I'm just yeah. saying that that's something that that an, another another reviewer re- said. Reviewer yeah. said. I, I mean, I I don't. No, because it's it it, it's, it doesn't I, feel like there's anything missing. No, you know, it's a you beautiful. You're not missing out by on on it or anything. You mm-hmm. don't. It's not something. Yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful book with with you know so much, uh, so much going on in it that you really need. Really need to. Uh, the translator was Jamie Richards. Lettering, uh, Stevan Rudat. Oh, I was wondering about the lettering. Yeah. I really loved. I liked the lettering. There yes. was times where it was kind of difficult to read, but that just made it feel. It just made it. It makes it feel that much more um, handwritten. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's real. Feels, it feels yeah. like you're reading somebody's first I, draft almost. It's, I bet you that's the point behind it. It's uh-huh. not. It's not like if, if you read comic books or graphic novels, and you see professional letterers. I mean, their lettering is almost perfect. Perfect. Yes. Oh yeah. Letters. All this is like somebody was writing. I mean, not not writing like like. Uh, not uh, not cursive. They were just like writing, like, and uh-huh. it, what do I have to the word? Printing. Printing. Uh-huh. Yes, printing. <laughs> printing. Okay. But it, it's it's just great. It's just great. It, yeah. it, it really it does it adds a lot to the story. Yeah, I, I to the whole thing does. because it does. It's like it just fits in. Like so, the letter balloons and uh, letter boxes are no different than the writing that the grandfather is doing himself. Right. So it all blends together. Like uh-huh. it's all one thing. Yeah. Cause he could have done that differently too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, it definitely tied everything together. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Yeah. And it's really a, a, a wonderful book. Um, and, and you get your story and, you know, we're not gonna tell you where it goes or what happens, but, uh, it, it's a good story. Really good. Yeah. It um, was, uh, again, it was... it's from Fanagraphics. Thank you for the, uh, the, the uh, review copy. Thank you again. Yes. Um, you know, I don't know what else. I don't know what else to say without giving everything away. No, it's it's hard. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. I mean, we could say so much, but I think we would give too much away because you really have to read it. You do, and 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 see it. The art. I can't get over the the watercolor artwork. Mm-hmm. I know it's beautiful. It's just so. Amazing. We uh, Natalie Dupil uh, also did uh-huh. uh, did watercolor like that. It is beautiful. It it's is. just I, you know. I, I I love the look of a lot of comics and I love the digital stuff and everything. Uh-huh. But you know what? The the watercolors, which you know takes more time. Oh wow! Well, I, yeah. I you know I can't say it takes I more time I, for everybody. Yeah. It, it it it's it's I don't know. I can't say what that is for anybody because somebody could be really fast at that too, uh, ver- versus somebody else who has to take longer to do. Yeah, you know, I don't digital. think the amount of time spent yes, is, it's, is, it's, is it necessarily, but no, you're right. Um, but it's definitely it definitely gives uh, adds a layer of depth. I feel like oh yeah, definitely. you know you can see the emotions mm-hmm. in, in the in the paintings. You know mm-hmm. the dr- the paintings of a storm or yep. you know what um, the mountains and stuff. Yep. So and uh, I mean the the eyes, like I said, mm-hmm. the eyes of the guy as as they're trying to be quiet because they're going to be found and they're in a trench and mm-hmm. you know they're searching and you got to be quiet, but your foot is blown off, mm-hmm. so you know. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, uh, you can, you can really feel that mm-hmm. emotion. Yeah, I agree. I agree that, uh, I don't, I don't know if there's much else we can say about that. Uh, next week will be our final episode of 2020. Unbelievable. Uh, it's going to be coming out on December 25th. 
And it's actually going to be our best of 2020, like we discussed. I think we said that at the end of the show, didn't we? I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember. Either. But uh, yeah, the best of 2020. Going to give you our, our top books of this year and, uh, you know, the best and worst it's of this year. very hard. It, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. We, we, we reviewed a, a, we read a lot of books a this lot year. Of amazing and we read a, a, a lot of really, really good books. Yeah. Uh, we'll have one review, one new, one maybe two new reviews next week, um, and then uh, on January first will be the first episode of 2021. We're going to be do- doing Kent State. Yeah. Uh, so sorry that one took so long. Uh, it is a big book with so much that that's going to be a lot to talk about, and um, great way to start the year. Yeah. I mean it. it it would have definitely been uh, one of my top picks for, for this year if we had got it in this year. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that next. It can be our top pick for next year. Oh, it will be. <laughs> Anyhow, until next week, my name is Mike. And I'm Parker. And this is The Graphic, Graphic Novel, Novel Podcast. Podcast.